proteins are biochemical polymers that are responsible for a huge variety of functions within biochemical systems. The reason why proteins, like the one shown here, are responsible for such a huge variety of functions is that their amino acid building blocks are very structurally diverse. There are about 20 different types of amino acids that go into the formation of proteins. And when you consider the size of a typical protein, this leads to massive structural diversity in this class of biomolecules. Where we're going is a discussion of how specialized proteins called enzymes catalyze chemical reactions. But to get there, we have to understand the general properties and structures of proteins and the amino acid building blocks first, and that's the focus of this series of videos. The monomer units or building blocks found in proteins are called alpha amino acids. They're carboxylic acids that contain an amino group linked to the alpha carbon of the carboxylic acid. And here we're using alpha in the sense that we've seen it in carbonyl context before. The carbon directly connected to the carbonyl carbon is the alpha carbon. When amino acids polymerize to form long chains in proteins, they do so through their amino and carboxylic acid groups. And for this reason, these three atoms, the amino nitrogen, alpha carbon, and carbonyl carbon, form a contiguous chain of atoms within a protein called the backbone. Linked to the alpha carbon, we also find an R group, which can have one of about 20 different structures. And the R group, because it branches from the backbone, is called the side chain. Now that structural diversity in the side chain is really what's, in, what's responsible for the functional diversity of amino acids and proteins. Because as we polymerize the amino acids and put different side chains next to each other, emergent properties appear. For example, proteins fold up into unique shapes, creating binding sites for molecules, creating sites where chemical reactions can happen, and so on and so forth. It's worth noting that in the majority of amino acids, the alpha carbon is stereogenic. It's a stereogenic center. It's saturated, sp3 hybridized, and it bears four different groups. A hydrogen, the amino group, the carboxylic acid group, and the side chain. Most natural amino acids have the L configuration at their alpha carbons. And for all but cysteine, which contains a unique side chain that we'll look at in a second, the L stereochemical descriptor is equivalent to the S configuration at that central carbon. So the typical situation is that the amino nitrogen is prioritized number one, the carboxylic acid group is two, and the side chain is three. And we can see that this generally gives rise to the S configuration for most chiral amino acids. Cysteine is the exception, and the reason cysteine is an exception is because it has a relatively heavy atom in its side chain connected to the carbon that's linked to the alpha carbon. So cysteine has a thiol group within its side chain, and because of that thiol group, the side chain ends up being prioritized higher than the carboxylic acid, because the carbonyl carbon in the carboxylic acid is only linked to oxygens. And so here we can see that in cysteine, even though we have the same basic configuration with the side chain pointed out towards us with the amino and carboxylic acid groups in the same positions, this has the R configuration formally. Like all biomolecules that form polymers, amino acids contain both nucleophilic and electrophilic groups within their structures. The nucleophile in an alpha amino acid is the amino nitrogen. Relatively low electronegativity, and that nitrogen bears a non-bonding lone pair that's a great Bronsted base and a great Lewis base. The electrophile in an amino acid is the carbonyl carbon of the carboxylic acid group. And here I say potential electrophile because as a carboxylic acid, that carbonyl carbon is not terribly electrophilic. However, if we could convert OH into a better leaving group or nucleophuge, we could make this a great acylating reagent, something that puts the acyl group or the carbonyl group on a nucleophile, such as an amino nitrogen. That's a little teaser that basically describes how amino acids can polymerize to form polyamides or proteins. The amino acids, like the carbohydrates, are generally known by common names but we also abbreviate them using three-letter and one-letter abbreviations, particularly when we're talking about a sequence of amino acids within a long polypeptide chain. For example, the amino acid valine has the side chain shown here. I always think it looks like a V, and valine is also denoted using the three-letter abbreviation VAL and the one-letter abbreviation V.